to 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. I'm your host, Rachel Vogel, and tonight we have a very special guest, Matt McLernan. Matt works on the artist relations team at YouTube and Google, helping artists grow their audiences and careers through everything from marquee projects to the daily grind. He also focuses on live stream partnerships, which become global moments and oversees the booking process for artist partnerships within the company. So we are so excited to have Matt join us. Matt, how's it going? Hey, Rachel. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate of it. Of course. So I told you right at the beginning, it goes super fast. So we're just going to jump right into it. Let's do it. Question one. Imagine for a second, you're sitting down with your 25 year old self. What's one piece of advice that you would give him on a personal note? And what one piece of advice would you give him from a business perspective? Yeah, the, the personal advice is uh, there's no there there. I think um, I was fixated on what I came to call this age achievement matrix. By age X, I will do Y. And by age Z, I will do A that... I realized that what felt like uh, encouragement and seeing people around you doing those things just became a trap. And it was, I was so fixated on like, earlier I was in, in my PR career, I was like, okay, I'm an account executive. I have to get to senior account executive within two years. So my LinkedIn shows that so I can do this. <laughs> and just like how much of a trap that is. And you're like racing after nothing and uh, and, and more than anything, it steals the joy of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I was told, I've just learned recently of a line of the, the path to happiness is happiness. And like, that is the, like really seeing the present moment for what it is. For um, sure. That's the, the personal one, the professional one ideas have to be a little bit crazy. <laughs> if, <laughs> It has to be like, there has to be a part of when, when you have an idea, some part of it has to not make sense. Otherwise it's a thing that already happens. Like stoplights go from red to yellow to green. That's what they do. At some point, someone had this like crazy idea that like lights would show different colors and that would mean different things. Mm -hmm. And keeping that spirit alive of when one day in New York, I was just, I missed my train. It was like the trash workers strike in New York city in August. And, and literally an idea popped up that was like, Hey, you should just try to go transfer to your S to your San Francisco office. Just like go talk to your boss right now about it. See how it goes. And it was crazy. And it was like the best thing that ever could have happened to me. And I think I try to remember that when idea is like in front of you and you're like, dude, no way. That's just too crazy. And like, okay, good. It, sh it should be crazy. It should be pushing you out a little bit more. Definitely. I love that. So I'm curious in a company like you two working with the artist relations team and everything, what does like a crazy idea look like? <laughs> My favorite example was this project called Save Our Stages, where it was early pandemic um, all of the indie owned music venues that were most at risk of closing were, um, they started to band together into what is, is now called Neva, the National Independent Venue Association mm -hmm. to try to lobby for themselves and like organize and do something. And they, and one of my coworkers had this crazy idea of like, let's put on a whole festival for them in like peak pandemic. <laughs> Uh, let's bring in these like huge, crazy, amazing artists to these like precious indie venues that are at risk of going away forever. Let's turn it into this fundraiser and get a sponsor to come in um, all while like everyone's working remote. And like, <laughs> how do you even film something right now? Right. Um, and all of this stuff that used to require people being in the rooms. Um, and all of it is like, we want to do it in like, two months or three months or like something. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and so it, it ended up being, it was completely crazy. And it was probably like the best thing that got me through the pandemic, like career wise, it's the uh -huh. most fulfilling thing I have ever done. We like helped raise more than $2 million for these venues. We also helped um, the, the lobbying that they were doing to the government to get billions in funding that ended up going through. Um, uh -huh. So all of this of like, 
the, 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 the potential for like, oh my gosh, why are we doing this was all over the project. And those were taken as signs of like, there's something here. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's try it. And we brought Foo Fighters into Troubadour and like Miley Cyrus into the whiskey venues across like Nashville and New York and, and all these other places that turned into just this like amazing project and more than anything allowed us to like try to feel like, hey, we're doing something. We're trying. Mm-hmm. So that's so cool. Yeah. I remember, I remember seeing things about that. That was awesome. Oh, cool. Thanks. Yeah. It's, yeah. it was, yeah. The, 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 the super crazy part was my boyfriend and I, at the time he worked for a couple that their great Dane was in LA and they <laughs> were hoping to have their great Dane with them in Florida and you can't fly a great Dane. Mm. So <laughs> we were like, what if we got you an RV and uh, you drove this dog across the country while trying to do this project. So like, oh my gosh, <laughs> the layers of, of, of crazy were strong as like many parts of this project I was doing on like a little MiFi mm. card in the back of uh, an RV, which I learned if you're renting an RV from like RV America or the like mass mm. consumer one, bless them. It's not like the artist tour buses that you think in your head because air conditioning only works in the front of the car. Oh no. <laughs> so me just sweating bullets in the back, trying to like advance performances at tiny venues oh and all these other pieces all at the same time. So it was a, it was a special couple months. Well, you did it. So congrats. <laughs> did it. Yeah. Me, during Save Our Stages, I also helped escort a 130 pound dog across the country yes <laughs> yes that's crazy well you have a really fun story moving right along every industry has its dirty little secrets and we all know that it's no different in the music industry and sometimes people think that that's a bad thing but that's not always the case sometimes they can be quite good so what's one secret you would like to share with our listeners about the industry one of my favorite secrets is the more you genuinely offer to pay for tickets, Mm -hmm. the more likely you are to get them for free. (laughs) It's like, it's, it's kind of a paradox in itself, but it's, it's a, it's an example, I think of like the reciprocity that runs throughout the industry. Like no one wants to put that person on the list who like demands to be on the list the the amount of times where an, an artist that I love where I will tell the the rep or their manager or whomever like I, I, I love this artist I see they're coming in in November or whatever I'll, I'll let me know I should buy or like when tickets go on sale I'm gonna buy some tickets or let me know mm-hmm. and like genuinely offering to pay and more often than not is when they're like no you're our guest come to the show come to the show versus other times where we've had events and someone's like Oh yeah, here's me and my my list of ten people that have to be at right. your event. I'm like, do you have to be there, or do you really <laughs> want to be there? Right. Are you going to be the like, do you know who I am person at the door? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that that like that reciprocity, that offering value, returning value, is is so true in the music industry and in in real time. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, offer offer to pay for tickets and see what happens. Okay, that is a very good thing to know. <laughs> and I also mm. feel like it's honestly, I mean, kind of like what you're saying, but it's a bit like unheard of, because I feel that especially people that work in music in these companies are working with the artists or working with the teams, they sometimes just assume that they'll be involved or that they get to go. But that's a good point. It's it's definitely would make a difference it makes you stand yeah. apart. Yeah. And that that part of like, I like to always remember uh, I was told that we are all of our ages. And so I try to remember at all times that like 15 year old me who would like lose his damn mind to be in some of these moments that I'm in when I'm like, oh man, I have to, uh, I have, I'm, I'm going to be out. I'm going to be at the Grammys all weekend and I have to do this and I have to do this. And you're like, pause, <laughs> mm-hmm. look at like 15 year old you and tell him like hey the grammys invited you to the grammys this year because we were doing a live stream project with them like how insane is this remember that music fan that's in there like the one who would buy tickets and be like clicking through on sale like i am i am head over heels in love with fred again he is he is the greatest thing in in my world (laughs) right now 
Um, and the amount of like, uh, he's performing at the Hollywood Forever out here. Um, and I was trying to buy tickets on my phone on Chrome and it didn't work because it laid a cookie. Oh, no. And then I went to Safari and then I went to a desktop and I went to a desktop Safari incognito. And it was this like this moment of remember, like remember this is like part of that fan experience. And like you show up, you you give some kind of energy and you you get some in return. Totally. Yeah. That's funny that you mentioned that. I was just trying to get Harry Styles tickets. I joined the queue one minute late. I was number 2,200 in line. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It happens. And like, you never know. You never know. Like, if you're the person who offered like, hey, I, I would love to buy a Harry ticket, whatever. When day of so-and-so who had to be on the list is now not coming because they're in another country, you're more likely to be that person getting that first phone call. Like, Hey, I know right. you wanted to come. I just had an opening. Can you make it? And knowing that like you, the fan who would have paid money to do it, that when, when the person with that ticket or with that point of authority, you're more likely to be that person that they want to call. Cause they want people in the room who want to be in the room. Yeah. It brings the excitement back a little bit. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Well, like I said at the beginning, here we are already at the last question. <laughs> All right. Throughout your career, I can only imagine you've been asked a lot of questions, whether for an industry conference, the media, or even a promotion. But throughout all of those interviews and all of those questions, I'll bet there is one that you have never been asked but would have liked to. So what is that question and what would be the answer? This is probably the most unique question I think I have ever been asked. I really enjoy <laughs> all of the like... It's very like Doctor Strange playing with timelines and mm -hmm. metaverse and, and all of these pieces to it. Um, when thinking about it, the one that came to mind was how we can best harness the rallying energy that the music industry has to make really meaningful contributions. Save Our Stages that I mentioned was, was in reaction to the pandemic we are in this a, a continuous like gun violence epidemic. There are mm. countless other things that we could call out that because of the way that music brings people together, there is this amazing like rallying energy that comes out of it. And we work with Global Citizen, a bunch who will do these events to get people's attention on why we need equitable vaccine access and, and these like big important topics that I think music has this power to uh to like tap into that rallying energy and i guess is the question of like how do we continue bringing that out ideally without needing some form of tragedy to, to set it in motion um that's my question i think that was like a question and a statement at the same time um the, that was the great. best answer i can think for it is tapping into like calendar moments like we all of, uh, I, I, I used a lot of quotes, I guess. Um, I was told that music is sounds in time, that the time piece is so important and that otherwise it's just noise. And playing into that element of time of like how we approach calendar moments, how we look at um, spring starting and, and summer starting and like how it fits the natural rhythms, like maybe there's some ways where we can set more like calendar moments where there's like uh, the, the first of the month, there's some form of like uh, gun violence fundraising performances, or there's some kind of repetition to it that keeps right. us aware, it keeps us aware and keeps us like, uh connected to the things that really matter that like the community building that music can do like we put an incredible amount in the effort into save our stages for for that project after it it kind of that energy went elsewhere and mm -hmm. like how how we best harness that energy for what's most important or or what we need to stay focused on i think especially with with the younger generations especially focused on like the the younger generation is so much more vocal and willing to create and speak their mind and 
we we see this with YouTube Shorts and how much people are expressing in all kinds of different ways. Channels that would have not necessarily uploaded something and are now posting Shorts or posting short form and things like that of that tapping into that expression to make these meaningful moments last more than just in reaction to a tragedy. Absolutely. Well, it sounds like you are on the path of starting your next crazy project. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a, wow, you really tied it together really nicely on that one. I think I, <laughs> I think I have my motivation for the rest of the day. There you go. Well, Matt, it has been so wonderful having you on tonight. I appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. And to all of my listeners, I know you enjoyed hearing from Matt just as much as I enjoyed speaking with him. So stay tuned for next week's episode of 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. See you next time. Thanks.